One of my favorite things about my job is the fact that I get to experiment a lot. Unique flavors and combinations thereof are the life Line, the bloodline of my work, and this week I elected to delve down the unfamiliar aisles of my liquor store for an ingredient called Aquavit, which we're going to use to make a cocktail called the Nordic Summer on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, ho there, my name is Michael. I am a private events bartender currently available for hire and a home mixologist. And today we are going to talk about a cocktail called the Nordic Summer, which is really great because we're going to have a chance to talk about a new unique, not new, but unique spirit that I think most people would probably not have a frame of reference for. A lot of people are probably familiar with botanical liquors in the sense of gin, and gin being the most common, prominent one you can find in most liquor stores. However, there are other forms of botanical liquors, and one of those is known as aquavit. I have a bottle here called Norden Aquavit, which comes from, I think, uh, Traver, uh, Norden Spirits Distilling in Chelsea, Michigan. And essentially what this is, is a more modern take on a spirit known as aquavit. Now, what is aquavit, you may be asking? Very simple question. It's a botanical liqueur usually distilled uh, as a neutral grain from potatoes or wheat, rye, similar grains, uh, and then is flavored much like gin using botanicals. However, the principal botanical is very, very different. While gin is flavored predominantly with juniper and is typically made in England, aquavit is made in the Scandinavian region, so Finland, Norway, Sweden, areas of Northern Europe, uh, and is predominantly flavored with caraway. If you don't have a frame of reference for what caraway tastes like, it's the predominant flavor in rye bread. So if you've ever had like a rye swirl from Pepperidge Farm, that's what caraway tastes like. That in combination with more uncommon botanicals like cinnamon or cassia, uh, clementine peels, and, and cumin and, and sage, sumac, actual fucking evergreen trees, by the way, it's crazy. Just of what I'm getting at here is that this stuff is a rectified form of botanical liquor that has had a super long and interesting history, and I think needs to be more prominent in American cocktail mixology. Aquavit's history goes back in written form to the 16th century, 1531 specifically, when a Christian archbishop is speaking to a king or lord from Denmark and offers him a bottle of this thing called aquavit, uh, literally translating from Latin as the water of life, kind of like how eau de vie is the same thing in French. It was thought back then, like nearly every, every spirit on the face of the planet, to be uh, to be medicinal. That's not the case. Those are claims are incredibly erroneous. Wow. However, uh, it is delicious. It is a fascinating and earthy, deep, more complex form of gin in my mind. And while that's kind of reductive and does reduce it to sort of a varietal of gin, its presence is pretty familiar, this one in particular. It's Norden Aquavit from, uh, from, you know, this Chelsea, Michigan distillery is also flavored with juniper. Uh, juniper and dill and coriander, sage, things that do appear in some gins. So um, the amount of crossover is, is there, but it does make phenomenal cocktails unique to itself, which we're going to make one of today. There is a blog called Moody Mixologist, who many of you probably already know about and or potentially follow, and they came up with a cocktail, uh, as far as I can tell it's an original cocktail, called a Nordic Summer, which is a combination of an aquavit, uh, not necessarily this one specifically, but an aquavit, and Aperol, which is an Italian bitter liqueur. Now, Aperol uh, is sort of its own rectified, rarefied, um, bitter, uh, look, specialized liqueur. There's not really a replacement for it, but the two have a very common through line of an earthiness to them, uh, even though this is very sweet and very citrusy and bright. Uh, that bitter element to it kind of makes them very, very compatible ingredients. So let's go ahead and make a Nordic Summer and see how our Aperol and Aquavit blend together. So a Nordic Summer is a shaken, uh, sour type cocktail that blends Aperol, Aquavit, and lime juice together, uh, along with some optional simple syrup to sort of back sweeten for 
to, to taste, essentially. The combination it is sensible, the botanicals and orange and uh, citrus to adjust for acidity. I think it's gonna work pretty well, but I'm going to take a couple of liberties with how it's prepared because I think it'll be fun and interesting. To begin, we're gonna take a lime and I'm gonna go ahead and prepare this much the same way that I would uh, the lime we use in a caipirinha. I'm going to, instead of juicing this the way it was initially prescribed, I'm going to cut this into wedges or pieces and then uh, muddle them whole into our shaker. We've got our lime prepped. I'm gonna set this aside here, grab our shaker back. We're gonna go ahead and dump those straight on in. Muddling your citrus into your sour is going to give you a more full presence of that citrus's flavor because you're getting not just juice from the pulps, but uh, oils from the peel. So I think that's gonna be a nice advantage here to play off of some of our other ingredients and in their flavors. It was listed as optional in the Moody Mixology blog, but they did mention that some simple syrup can be helpful, and I think I actually agree. Uh, cocktails made with aperol tend to be undersweetened because as a liqueur, it's not a particularly sweet liqueur. It's very much moderated. So I'm going to add a quarter ounce of simple syrup to our limes when I muddle so that it dissolves and we can get a little bit more balanced sweetness. I'm gonna take my muddler and we're gonna go ahead and just press down on those limes until they've released all of their juices and oils. I don't wanna overdo it though because there can be a lot of bitterness in the pith of uh, citrus, so don't go too crazy just enough until they're they're broken down. To come behind that with some Aperol. In this case, we'll do one full ounce. And finally, we'll go ahead and do two ounces of Aquavit. Aquavit has a lot of very different characteristics to it depending on which kind you get. Dill Aquavits are very common. Um, caraway and dill are like the two accepted legally distinct flavors for Aquavit. You don't want to use a dill, a dill forward Aquavit here. You want to use something uh, caraway forward and then preferably that contains gin-like botanicals, something light and lighter than uh, dill, which is very, very savory and would be interesting here, but maybe not appropriate. I'm gonna grab some ice here, and like always, we'll do one cube whole and one cube cracked. Cap that up, tap it down, and give that a shake for about 10 to 12 seconds. We're gonna serve this up in a coupe like so, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a strainer here and just double strain that straight on in. Finally, we have the top garnishes. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna go for just a very simple uh, wheel of lime. Let's get a nice little wheel here. Perch that right up on the rim. And there you have, ladies and gentlemen, a Nordic Summer. Alrighty, with our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and give our Nordic Summer a try. This is actually the first time I have tried this cocktail. Uh, I made it using, um, let me show you. Ramazzotti manufactures an aperitivo rosado, what they call it, which is um, orange blossoms and hibiscus. Very good, but it's not the correct thing here. It's not quite bitter enough. But I didn't have any Aperol until this morning, so I'm interested to see how this tastes. Cheers. Oh. Oh, that's... Oh, wow. Okay, before I forget, I have to take a photo of this from the thumbnail but I'm actually blown away. Give me one moment. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I've been using that technical difficulties bit a little too much. This is a, an insanely interesting cocktail uh, and one one that has sort of a, a very similar problem that I was experiencing in my own experimentation with Aquavit, uh, but that is still functionally fascinating. Let me explain. Man, that is so good. The problem with Aquavit as a spirit is that it does not pair particularly well with certain kinds of citrus. The botanicals in Aquavit are so much darker and richer and more earthy than the ones present in gin. And that means that its distinct characteristic kind of neuters it a little bit against different forms of citrus. The thing is though, you wouldn't normally experience coriander and caraway and dill paired up alongside such a bright and tart citrus, sweetened by a citrusy bitter liqueur. The combo is like not a known thing. And it makes it 
first of all, very approachable as a spirit to be able to be put with these things and make something fascinating that is challenging enough to someone's palate to make them want to try something new, but, you know, familiar enough to not alienate them completely. In essence, what I'm getting at is that this is a really fun way to introduce people to Aquavit, which is sort of the point. Um, the, it was meant to sort of bridge the gap between familiar gin, citrusy, bitter cocktails, uh, and then introduce unique and interesting botanicals to that for the sake of making something more cool. Well done, Moody Mixologist. You guys did a good job. Well, we are there already. Seems like this one went by a little bit quicker than last week's episode. Uh, we are to our weekly reading of Crisp Toasts by Andrew Frothingham and William Evans. Last week, we finished up our section on uh, accountants, actually, believe it or not, and we move on to a section entitled Action. That's, that's it. Just, just the word action. Today's toast goes as such. Here's to doing and drinking, not sitting and thinking. I can get behind that. Thank you all so much for watching today's episode of the show. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this more, look at a more modern and equally challenging, interesting cocktail based in a spirit that um, now that I've introduced to you, I hope to double back on and do a more in-depth look at, because uh, there are other cocktails that I wanted to try that use aquavits, uh, and I simply could not find the other ingredients in time. So we'll get there one day, but for now, we're calling it done. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch the next episode. A new one comes out every single Friday and then sometimes on Saturdays. So keep that in mind moving forward because there's always more content to be made and more drinks to be had. My socials are appearing on the screen or have been on the screen for some time now. Either way, go ahead and check those out. I use TikTok and Instagram the most. So if you want to see more content, what I'm doing on a daily basis in this bar or other looks at things I'm trying, um, follow me there. I'll be doing one thing or another. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your afternoon. And I will see you all in the next episode of the show. Bye-bye.